No, they they would criticize me for other things. Uh, you know, they would criticize me for sitting like a sissy. You know, uh, for, uh, uh, or okay. for not being dedicated enough to the Lord's work or something like uh, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a different. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. What they were pointing to was different, but. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really just trying to open myself up more to... Uh, so is that the basis of though you, it feels like to you when you have this hostile reaction to the gay folks doing stuff that's related to how you were indoctrinated around despising being yourself and thus despising being gay, so if someone else is gay and doing something, to be handled that way too? I hadn't gotten that far enough with it. I, I uh -huh. was just uh, feeling that competition, but I, uh -huh. I can see what you're saying is being indoctrinated uh -huh. about uh, I, I had to hate myself. I was uh -huh. supposed to right. what deny right. being who I am, and so I just project that and do that. Out. I would wonder. I would wonder from the dynamic we're discussing. Perhaps there can be something that, that can get more and more of your awareness and congratulate you struggle with this issue. And I encourage you to keep trying to struggle to be able to find the truth of, of your own true being to yourself in that kind of way. That brings up those kind of contradictions of that and lines to keep struggling. Uh, have supported others as a gay that's what really constructive. So it's challenging also in the exact way you mentioned. The very problem is when we want to allow and cooperate with feedback from others. That doesn't mean that feedback from others is good per se. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, Calvin. and thank you very much. Yeah, any, anyone reacting to what Callum is saying or, or can recognize what he's talking about there? When one grows up in an oppressed group or an oppressed class, yeah. one comes to not only despise oneself but other members of the, defense of the oppressed class. I certainly have to experience that a lot on both sides of that terrible problem. It's a tough one. Is there anything else uh, stimulated, triggered by the yeah, sorry. Um, I, Roger, I think I said earlier. Um, I'm struck a little bit along the lines that Callum was saying um, in terms of like the challenge of doing the introduction for this talk. Mm -hmm. um, how 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 much I struggle around being honest and present about what I'm actually feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things I got from how are you, from how you're reading the paper and telling us about the paper and the paper itself is um, this uh, sense of deep empathy uh -huh. for what it, the struggle to be homosexual yes. and the struggle to be a person and yes. to stand up and say, I'm a homosexual and I value homosexuality. Sure. Yes. And that that is still, like I think you suggested, is still a real huge challenge. Oh, sure. Especially to go from, from gay to gay affirmative to gay center. Sure. So, and along a little bit what you were suggesting, Helen Moran, opening up to feedback from our gay brothers and sisters, that, that that's, that, um, that feedback that is valuable has empathy, even if it's not, I like you, even if it's, I'm angry with you, or you have a shadow, that there's real empathy in that. So in, in the paper, it seems like there's this deep empathy that you're evoking for these characters, and than subsequently for ourselves, in terms of facing the shadow. Uh-huh. That, that, yeah. Great. So uh, I just really okay. appreciate that. Oh, great. Interesting feedback. Great, thanks for the feedback. Huh. Any other uh, reaction to the feedback that you have One first, yes. Uh, my name's Jason, and uh, I was really excited to come here to learn more about this paper, having heard uh, a bit about it. but. Um, I have to say, first of all, it, it has affected me on so many levels, which perhaps it has many of us, that it's actually hard to focus it in any one sure. direction, because sure, it sure. wants to spin off in so many sure. levels, so I, I commend you for bringing all those feelings up. Uh -huh. um, and I really, as you got as you got more into the text, it, uh -huh. it really was, you did a good job of getting it to the point where it was like a slow boil, <laughs> and all of these things just then started to pop out. Uh -huh. um, one thing in particular, well, the, the whole, you know, seeing a monster that uh, uh, your creation uh, and the, 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 the fear, the run from it uh, resonates on many levels. And also uh, the, the, when Frankenstein seeks his revenge by killing those 
who were closest, or the preacher, yeah. to kill Frankenstein's closest people. That is a childhood dream of mine throughout wow. my life, and still to this day, the nightmare is that wow. in my dreams, I am impossible to kill myself, but instead, the creatures after me destroy everyone around me. Wow. And, and I came to that awareness of, of my homosexuality at a certain age, too. That was likely what it was. Uh -huh. um, also, the, the the idea that Frankenstein is the most you know is the character that has the most soul. It's very powerful. The, the creature, yeah, has the most soul and is this beautiful, yeah. innocent. Huh. You know, huh. what a what a powerful thing to consider. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And the twisting of that. And they set it up. The authors of the book set it up to yeah. confound the reader in that way. Yeah. And again, you know, the authors, it's, uh -huh. it seems that this, the, the exchange of letters is very much part, part of the creation and in the book itself. Yeah, isn't that interesting? The correspondence. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and there's a echo. Uh, it it would be an echo it's... because the letters being written by the explorer in the Arctic would be sent to the his wife or woman. Sister. 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 Yeah. sister. Exactly. <laughs> Which is like the Mary character. Yeah, uh, Frankenstein's a sister, too. Yeah. I'm sure the two Shelleys, the Shelley and Mark Mary, yeah. they thought of each other as brother and sister. <coughs> yeah. So then, being advanced as they were, an incest, like the Lord Byron was concerned, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they were really in opposition to those who would be disgusted by such things. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, you can see inside their own psyche, if you take the knowledge of uh, Frankenstein, it's about Percy Bish, his psyche. Whoa, I wouldn't want to be really any very, very close to him. People back then were often very ambivalent as male to male lovers. Mm. Mm. Suggests. They weren't trustworthy. They might play with you for a bit and then drop you like a dead weight, for example. That kind of kind of picture of that. You know, as you know, Shelley drowned in a boating accident in 26 mm. on the lake in the this problem of love is a very difficult one for homosexuality. And today, two centuries after this novel, which is again sort of suggests why the novel so so bumpy in this particular way. So thanks, thanks very much for your share of how that was reacting for you. Is it what was your name again? Jason. That's right, Jason. Jason. And on many other levels too, but it's just yeah. it's, it's deep. Well, that's wonderful. I want to encourage you to keep having things bubble and cook as they come to experiment the experience. That's one of the things we're trying to do here is provide stimulation in un unused space. Otherwise it uh, doesn't provide any opportunity of this kind. There is no opportunity of this kind. One can't go anywhere get a public space that is interested in gay centered experiencing, same-sex love centered experiencing in the kind of way that keeps persisting and being interested. It persists and persists. So that's, that's a great um, reaction. And I'm wondering, does anyone else have any reactions? Yes, please. Hi, I'm Matt. And um, ah, I can, first of all, I just feel a little bit in awe of your ability to uh, formulate the, kind of the essay. It was like, wow, 30 years ago, I was just part of it. Like, how did you do that? <laughs> so that? Your brilliance around that is just kind of um, incredibly enviable, and also just, um, I feel very grateful that you could share it. And, um, I also noticed that I'm so, I feel very mirrored by the idea of the, that sense of monstrousness. And I struggle with it in um, our circle here that I, I have to practically um, remind myself that I'm not the monster and all that. And I project into the scene here that um, this is sort of. I don't know, the monstrous family, the monstrous community, the monstrous society. Um, and I'm doing that actively, you know, 
and just to be able to pierce through that at all wow. is an accomplishment. Wow. Um, and to own my own uh, violent assault on uh, myself and um, our circle here at the same time. That's, that goes on ongoing. Wow. Ongoing. Wow. And um, I feel really, uh, extremely troubled by it. On the one hand, and yet I also felt like um, your discussion was empathic to the bind I find myself in. That it's how many generations <coughs> have this level of trauma been going on, uh, and the idea that uh, gay liberation, while it's fabulous, um, it's a breakthrough on the one hand, the uh, idea that we're simply over it, or that anyone could be over it uh, within a generation, uh, really somehow feels um, reassuring to me okay. that I'm not just simply uh -huh. uh, so overly uh, fucked up that I can't uh -huh. just get with it, uh -huh. get with the yeah, program, yeah. <laughs> right. feel better about myself. Like happy day, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 little bicycles doing that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I feel very left out of that sometimes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Huh. Wow, that's heavy duty stuff too. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. that I think that's an ongoing struggle for all of us. No one really escapes the effects of uh, so socialization through brutality, which, aka, one's childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it's very brutal business growing up. It's pretended often as if it's not. And it's pretended it's still quite brutal. And like, and I've not yet known anyone who was not subjected in their childhood. Thanks a lot for that sharing. Wow, some strong reactions here, no surprise, because it's uh, obviously echoing a common theme uh, that uh, still produces an awful lot of struggle and suffering. Even now. Are there any other reactions or sharings or questions? Just to a little bit more. Yes. Yeah, at the beginning. That's the name, please. Well, oh, Thomas. <coughs> Uh, but again, you, you said something like the, the ugliness is caused by the way in which it is seen, something like that, which is what this is about. And it brought up this huge sadness, but also this huge rage that I've been made to feel, look at myself as ugly. Uh -huh. uh, that, that's, and, but I didn't know that. I took it on myself as if I was. And then I just perpetrated that on myself yeah. over and over. Yeah. Um, and so the, the the story just seems to show how you know Dr. Frankenstein was clueless as to what the problem was, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and was so caught in his own heteronormativity and yeah. all of that that he just yeah. abandoned himself. <laughs> still have the same heart, it's the same problem. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I think that, that you're having a reaction that they would have been very uh, appreciative of and stimulated of you through my little presentation here. Uh, this would be how, how much that's still so true. That even though we might be on the surface much more enlightened than Dr. Frankenstein about handling our impulses and seemingly in a much more tolerant world, how much you still have to struggle with that self-hatred as much as you learn to accept yourself and live in a gay, tolerant, social world that supposedly we have nowadays. And several people now have shared. Uh, this is still an ongoing great difficulty. I wonder if any of us have really escaped. Mm -hmm. I doubt it. From the idea of feeling terribly monstrous in a way like what is portrayed so often in that novel, since, again, the, the, the creature destroys everything. But, Too. Uh, it's like an image of utter failure in a nation. So it's like when they can only show the fags, you know, in love with one of them getting, one of them getting killed, you know, mm -hmm. they couldn't do it and couldn't picture anything more advanced than that. So it's going to have that kind of resonance, really. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, okay, we've got a little more. Did you have a question too? I'm sorry, finger.